Do you know that MyGeo requires access to your messages, media files, microphone, location and contacts? And it might be accessing some of these as we speak. You install this app to check your data in talk time, right? Why does it require the access to so many things? MyGeo is on over 600 million devices right now. Imagine the quantum of data it has access to. And when it comes to reach, WhatsApp takes the crown. With over 3 billion daily active users worldwide, get ready to be shocked when you actually know what all permissions you have granted to it. In this video, I am going to break down 10 such methods that hackers are using to exploit your devices and how to fix them. Hackers are always watching your online activity, waiting for one small mistake and there's a very high chance you have already made one. You might be thinking, why would someone target me? What could they possibly get out of my data? Here's the truth, you are more valuable than you think. Let me tell you exactly why. Hackers compile data points about you to create a digital clone. This clone might know your likes, dislikes, your cat's name, Amazon orders, and even your weird late night Google searches. And you might be thinking the worst they can do is to show you targeted ads. But let me break it to you. Your digital clone is not being used only to target ads, but anything from attempting to unlock your social media accounts to showing you tailored content that can influence your opinion. This content can be designed by marketing companies to pull you towards some product or by political organizations to push you against some political party. Practically stealing your vote. Most people don't even realize until it's too late. So what can you do about it? Let's dive in. First up, turn off all unnecessary permissions. Let's take Instagram as an example. Let's open its app settings and see what all permissions it has. Here it is. Access to your location, microphone, call logs, photos and videos. Why does Instagram need all these accesses? You might say, to upload my images, to upload my videos. But why does that need to be persistent? Can it not be one time? Give it a thought. Permissions make sense only when it's related to some core functionality, like Google Maps accessing your location. Sweet, makes sense. But why does a random flashlight app requires access to my messages? Here's how you take back control. Open your Android settings and head to Permission Manager. It's usually found under Security and Privacy. Review which apps are accessing what and try to disable the permissions which you feel is different from the typical core functionalities of the application. If possible, find some alternatives for the permission heavy apps. Don't be the allow everything type. Your music player does not need to know your location to drop that beat. At the very least ensure that pause app activity if unused is enabled in the app settings. It's a simple way to manage your permissions for those apps which might be quietly accessing your data in the background. Did you know that everything you post on social media can reveal a surprising amount of personal information? Photos and videos often contain some hidden metadata like your GPS coordinates and your device details which allows cyber criminals to collect more data about you. For example, a photo of you with a vehicle's license plate clearly visible can give out a lot of information. Cyber criminals can extract details about your car, owner's name, address as well as insurance information. A photo of your pet which reveals his name might also happen to be one of your password reset questions. All the data collected from your online activity can basically be used by hackers to do notorious stuff like cracking your passwords or trying to guess your password security questions. In 2016, criminals used Kim Kardashian's social media to track her activity, which led to her being robbed in Paris. Post this incident, she realized how vulnerable people are on social media and she decided to change her online habits, opting not to post anything real time. So by sharing photos of your vacation, you're practically telling burglars when your home will be empty. In fact, a survey by NBC Universal found that burglars actively use social media to identify potential targets. So a good rule of thumb is to post your vacation photos only after you return. What if I told you there's a hacking method that anyone can use against you without even technical skills? You might be wondering, it can be me, but hold your thought. I'm talking about WhatsApp web, a very convenient way of accessing your messages when you are juggling between your mobile phone and the laptop. But this convenience becomes a privacy nightmare if you have left it logged in in some public computer. In that case, you're basically giving all your chat history to the next user in a silver platter. Let's keep this possibility aside for a moment. What if someone gets access to your mobile phone for 10 seconds? They can link WhatsApp web to their browser and get a front row seat to your messages and media. To check if someone's snooping into your WhatsApp right now, Open WhatsApp settings, go to link devices and check whether there are any unfamiliar logins. It's probably your nosy sibling reading your message. Now you know why putting a screen lock is recommended. Ever get those emails which says urgent? You have won a free iPhone? Click here now. Yeah, don't click it, that's phishing. Phishing is basically when someone tries to trick you into giving away sensitive information by pretending to be someone you trust, like a friend or a company. And hackers are getting smarter with phishing. With the use of all those data which has been collected by hackers, 
They can craft emails so personalized that you will not even give a second thought before clicking on the links. And guess what? They are no longer limited to emails and messages. Thanks to the advancements in AI and natural language processing, phishing has leveled up to sound and video as well. That's right. With deep fakes, hackers can create audio or video which sounds or looks exactly like someone you know. Imagine receiving a video call from a friend asking for financial help. But that might be an AI. Scammers are using this and many are falling victim. So you must avoid sending money without meeting in person. Or if meeting is not possible, at least ask them some question that you think only your friend might answer. And if possible, make a call on their alternate number to confirm their identity. Now before you panic, there are always red flags you can spot. Let's break down a few. Number 1. Phishing emails love to create fake urgency. So you have to act fast without thinking much. Urgent action demands like change your password right now in the next 10 seconds or your account will be deleted. Red flag. Tip number 2. If you did not ask for any attachments, don't download any. And even if the links that looks legitimate, like the one here, just hover over it first and you might find it leads to a completely different website. Tip number 3. Gone are the days when phishing emails look like someone's cat ran across the keyboard. Now with the help of AI tools like ChatGPT, scammers have cleaned up their grammar. However, you may still get emails with weird errors. Like congratulations, you have won the lottery, click here to claim your monkey. You will be sitting and wondering whether that's a typo or people are actually winning monkeys these days in lottery. Red flag. Tip number 4. This is about generic greetings. Dear user, we have no idea who you are but you are valuable and here's your reward. If the company actually values you, they will surely know your name. So unless your name is dear user in the passport, it's a scam. Tip number 5. Offers that are too good to be true, like free products, service upgrades, or a lottery monkey, obviously. The sixth and the final tip is about email addresses. If the email address tries really hard to convince you, like some of these, you better stay away from those emails. Now let's test your learning. Here's an example of a phishing email. Pause the video and see how many red flags you can spot. Drop your findings in the comment box below. Here are the answers. This email has fake urgency and the email address is not owned by Google. High importance, again a warning sign, generic greeting, spelling errors, next one hour, they want you to act fast and that's always a warning sign. Secure my account looks suspicious as it's asking for your payment information. Urgency again and a too good to be true offer with again a suspicious link. I will see in the comments how many of you were able to find more than 5 identifiers. Imagine some hacker looking for something in the trash behind your office or home. It's a real thing called dumpster diving. Dumpster diving is a practice where cyber criminals try to find out sensitive information out of discarded material. Think about old crumpled bank statements or credit card bills or even a sticky note with a password. It's actually a gold mine for them. And wait, dumpster diving isn't limited to physical dumpster diving. It has evolved and now includes digital dump as well, which means recovering old hard drives, mobile phones or any storage devices they have found in the dump or stolen from somewhere. So how do you protect yourself? Before you sell off a device, make sure you use disk eraser tools like Eraser Classic, which is free by the way. And for physical documents, shred them away, that should do the trick. Finding a free charging station at the airport when your battery is at 1% can be a lifesaver, right? Wrong. Juice jacking is when you plug your mobile phone into a USB charging station and before you can even juice up to 5%, your data gets stolen and your phone installs a malware. I believe public charging stations are adult equivalent of some stranger in a van giving you a candy. Avoid it at all costs. So how can you keep your data safe during long travels? Carry a power bank. If you couldn't guess this one, it's not just your phone that needs a recharge. Picture this, you are walking around a parking lot and you find a USB drive lying just there. Wow, free storage. But let me stop you right there. In 2010, the Stuxnet virus crippled Iran's nuclear facility and physically damaged the nuclear centrifuges. How did it start? It took only one person plugging that infected USB drive into the system that allowed the Stuxnet virus to spread across the facility. This is called a baiting attack. It halted the country's nuclear operations completely. The FBI even issued a warning about these attacks in 2021, in which they mentioned about the USB devices being mailed to the organizations or left at common places like cafeteria, later to be picked up and plugged in by someone. Once the device is plugged in, it can install any kind of malware. Anything from a keylogger that registers itself as a keyboard into the system tracks all your keystrokes and sends it to the hacker to a full-fledged ransomware attack that encrypts the files and demands payment to unlock them. And let me tell you, there's no guarantee that you'll get your files back, as hackers tend to disappear once the payment is done. I mean, there's a reason why they call it ransomware attack. So next time you find a USB lying around, step on it, crush the hopes of the hacker and move ahead.
Is your password something like password at the rate 123? Congratulations! You have basically locked your front door but left a note outside that says keys under the mat. Cyber attacks are evolving. So should your password. Try not to reuse the same password on multiple platforms. And try to create stronger passwords. Aim for around 12 to 15 characters. Add in some capital letters, add in some small letters. Toss in some numbers and add a couple of symbols. Or if you're feeling lazy, take a blender, put your keyboard in that and run it for 5 seconds. That should do the trick. A good password can look something like this. Hard to guess but memorable. Once you have created the password, run it through some password testing tools like Password Monster. Do you know in 2019 Google reported that multi-factor authentication can stop 99% of automated attacks? So what is multi-factor authentication? In simple terms, it's a second layer of security, like an extra lock added to your door. And given the fact that your password is password at 123, you're going to need all such locks you can get. MFA is commonly called 2FA when there's only one extra layer of security. But you can add as many as you like. Remember, not all kinds of MFA are equally strong. Keep a combination of something you know, like a password, a pin or a pattern, something you have, like a mobile phone for OTP, and something you are, which is basically biometrics like your face, iris or fingerprint. MFA can be set up from account security settings on most of the platforms. And if you haven't enabled it yet, it's a perfect time to add a bodyguard to your account. Ever connected to a free public Wi-Fi at a metro station or a cafe and thought, wow, this is so convenient? Well, guess what? The hacker sitting three tables away from you is probably thinking the same thing. Intercepting a public Wi-Fi is one of the simplest methods for hackers to steal your information. So that quick check of your bank balance at the cafe is you basically handing your data to everyone in the cafe. So what's the solution? Get yourself a VPN. A VPN encrypts all your traffic and makes your data unreadable. This means that even if someone manages to intercept your data, all they are gonna get is gibberish. But be sure you're connected to the right Wi-Fi. While VPN protects your internet traffic, it cannot protect you when your Wi-Fi itself is compromised. So the best idea is to wait until you reach home. Congratulations, you are now officially a step ahead of the hackers. Remember, nothing beats awareness. So stay sharp, stay vigil, and for the love of God, if you're not planning to wake everyone in your contact list, don't allow contacts access to your alarm clock. Slap that subscribe button as if it's a hacker trying to guess your password. As soon as the video crosses 100 likes, I'll be making a part 2. See you in the next video.